Well, hey, welcome back to Just a Printer. My name's Dan, and today I'm going to be talking about the envelope inserter. I have three mailings today, uh, all getting stuffed in number 10s. Um, they all have a letter. They all have a reply envelope, and one has a card as well with it. So I'm going to go over what I do to set this up and talk about this machine and how awesome it is. So I'm not exactly sure what model number this is. Uh, I think it's from the 60s. Uh, it might, might even be older than that, but it's a pretty old machine. Uh, I bought it online, uh, $1,800 and a couple hundred bucks to ship it here. Uh, I knew nothing about them other than the fact that I was tired of inserting envelopes with my hands, and this is so much faster. So uh, when I had enough business to try and justify, like, okay, I need to invest in this. I did it, got it here, and yes, it is still on the pallet that it came here with. It's not entirely because I'm lazy, maybe a little bit, but also I'm six foot four. And this raises it up about five inches and it's at a better height for me. So I just, I just left it on there. First things first, whenever you're using this machine or any mechanical machine for that matter, every red spot back there, there's a bunch of them. They need to be oiled. And when you think you're, you found them all, you probably missed one. So go back and double check. Since I am self-taught on this, I'm just going to show you how I've been doing it. And, you know, it, it works really well for me. But I guarantee you there's people out there running these things much longer than me. Uh, please put comments below of what I missed. And feel free to correct me because uh, I'm not professionally trained on this but you know it seems to work really well okay so this machine has four bins for any material that you're going to be inserting into your number 10 envelope uh, they make these machines with eight and a ton more bins they make these things really long uh, but I, I really only do probably two to three um, sometimes I'm using all four I always run my return envelope in this first bin, so then it's always set up for envelopes. Then I'll do my letters, and then I do cards in this last bin. Uh, that way I don't need to do much adjusting on the double sheet detectors or the fingers in the back here. So this is the double sheet detector, uh, and what it does is it measures the distance of this finger down here. When this finger grabs one item, uh, it won't trigger a double sheet, but if it grabs two, it's going to open the contact or close the contact here. I forget which one it is. And then that will stop the machine and a red light, this red light here, will turn on. And then you need to make an adjustment uh, with your fingers back here um, to, to solve that problem. And this knob here is how you adjust that. Turning it counterclockwise will uh, adjust it for a thicker sheet, and tightening it in will uh, adjust it for a thinner sheet. On the back of each bin is a plastic finger that will come out and in uh, as each uh, piece of paper gets pulled down by this lower uh, sucker here. Uh, there is also an adjustment here with this needle. Uh, you can move that in or out, and the, your paper or envelope will rest on that uh, in between. And you'll see this running in a little bit, and it'll make a little bit more sense. But if you're getting doubles, you probably need to make some adjustments here. Uh, or if you're not getting anything at all, you need to make some adjustments here. But once it's good, you know, it, it just runs like a charm. Here's a view from the back. You have a sucker that pulls each piece down individually. And then right over here is the, uh, the little um, pin that your material sits on uh, as this sucker pulls the material down. And this white finger here goes in and out between each one and separates them. The other adjustments you have for each bin is this metal plate that can move in and out depending on the material you're running. 
Uh, sometimes if it's a card stock, you can keep this back further. Uh, if it's really thin paper, you want to keep it up so it supports it a little bit more. Uh, it just takes some some uh, fiddling with it to, to get it to work. You have two side guides. Uh, you don't want them too, too tight, but you want a little bit of a gap so your material can gravity feed through there. And same with this back guide. You want it up close, but not tight that it holds your material up, and then it'll create a miss. So you want to keep a little bit of a distance there on your stack of paper. And I keep this little block of paper here too because if I'm running single sheets, uh, a lot of the time it won't feed to the end. Uh, so what you do is you just put this weight on top to kind of hold the cards there as you're feeding until the last one gets pulled. So come around to the front here then. Right here is where you put your empty number 10s face down with the flap up. These three suckers here will pull each envelope down and this knob here moves each individual envelope after it's been pulled down to the left here where this finger will open and grab that envelope and then pull. This finger then pulls the envelope through the rest of the process until it stacks here after uh, it's been opened, inserted, sealed, and closed. I only use this for number 10 so I don't really have to do any adjustments but you can adjust this to do a different size envelope. Uh, you have side guides uh, and front and back guides that can move in and out. And you would also have to make an adjustment on this knob uh, by just loosening it and moving it left or right for the correct envelope size. This mechanism right here is what opens the envelope. Uh, this right here holds it open and there's a detector here. So if the flap is not open and uh, this electrical connection gets grounded, it'll stop the machine uh, because the flap's closed. Uh, this will sometimes happen if your envelopes get damp and uh, the, uh, the flap is sealed as it's coming across here. It won't open up. So this ensures that your envelope is indeed open before inserting materials. These three red suckers will open the envelope just a little bit uh, and let this arm push in your materials. Uh, there's also a sucker on the bottom here that pulls the envelope down uh, to ensure that it's indeed open far enough for your letters to be inserted. Uh, the finger then, this hold down, continues to draw the inserted envelope across here. There's a brush that it has water feeding through it and that's automatically it turns on as the machine's running and it'll turn back off when your machine is not feeding. You want to set this up so that you have one drop per envelope uh, and you do that by just opening this up and running the machine uh, and if you see one drop per envelope roughly it's good. Uh, you can make adjustments uh, on how open the valve is up here. Uh, there's also an on-off switch back here. Uh, there's a, an electromagnetic valve up here that, that allows the water to flow. After the envelope comes uh, underneath the brush and it's moistened, uh, this mechanism right here closes the envelope. Uh, and then it comes across here and stacks. I leave a little bit of envelopes taped together here for some hold down pressure to make sure that those first couple envelopes that come out of here are indeed sealed. Um, there's also a counter here that uh, keeps track if you want to double check your mailing uh, after it's been inserted. Down underneath here you can see uh, your electrical motor is here. You can adjust the speed of the machine with this knob here. Only adjust that when the motor is running. That motor uh, will change the speed of the machine. There's also another motor here that uh, drives the the vacuum pump. Uh, this runs on 220 and all the electronic adjustment or the, all of the electrical uh, components are pretty much contained in that box over there. There's a couple fuses that might blow um, 
I think I've had to deal with that once or twice. Here's your on switch. And then these four switches are whether or not the bins are on or not. So if you have an envelope and a letter, turn four and three on and let the others off and it will feed those two. In the back here, boy, the light's bad. Uh, you can see the, the back end everything. Again, there's several spots that need to be oiled. Um, and there's mechanical valves that uh, control the suction. Those don't get any oil in those. Clean those off with alcohol and keep them dry. That's the way they're supposed to be. Um, once I had uh, one was gumming up that I think feeds the envelopes and I had no suction, came back here uh, and the, the valve inside here just needed to be cleaned out. It's just like a piece of plastic that moves back and forth here and, uh, and oil uh, will make that gummy. So you got to clean those out. Okay, we got reply envelopes. The letter. And we have a reply card for this. I already have this set up, the double sheet set up for 65 pound cover here, so I don't need to uh, set that up. I will probably double check it a little bit just to make sure it's good. But pretty much, I just got to move the guides in and uh, we should be good to go. So we're going to be using bin four, three, and one. Now we should be good. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put bin one on first and jog it uh, and turn the other bins on as the material gets there so that it's all ready to go here. Actually, I forgot. I want to change this around. I want to put my letter here and my card here so that my letter lays down first and then the smaller card will sit on top of that and then the envelope before it gets inserted so let me switch this around i wasn't thinking oh yeah and i also forgot to go over these controls uh, in order to start the machine you always need to press these two buttons uh, either the green and this button to the right to start it or if you want to jog the yellow and this button to the right. And uh, if there's a jam or an error, you need to reset that and then you have to push the red button and the right button at the same time.
there's a double sheet. I let the cards run down too low, and then all the cards flipped over and came in, so there, there's two here. Uh, so this lever here, if you push down, will open up the fingers, then you can take that out. Here you can see the mechanism without any material in there, what's happening. So as you can see, once you get it set up, it runs like a charm, and it's really just a matter of keeping the beast fed and emptying it out. It runs pretty great. Almost. If you're real good, at the end of the inserting, you can turn the bins off sequentially as the letters roll down through there so that there's uh, the last collated bit of material gets inserted into the envelope, but I missed it by one. I'm not that good, not yet. I'm working on it. So just like any piece of equipment that you're running, you have to maintain quality control at all times. Uh, and the one thing you do have to watch on this and the newer ones probably have a feature to fix this but if you run out of water your envelopes won't seal so you need to make sure that there's always water in there there's no sensor to tell you that that's empty everything else is good it'll tell you if it messes up but the water is one thing you got to keep your eye on so as the envelopes are coming off you always have to check that seal missed it that time too oh well I guess I'm just in too much of a hurry but that went really well I'm all done I got one two three mailings here to take up to the post office hopefully you learned something and or were entertained today so 
Uh, if you have any other questions or comments about a Bell and Howell slash Phillipsburg inserter, let me know. Hope you have a great day. We'll catch you on the next one.